All right, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, well, I want to welcome to you to our first evening with PodCamp of 2012. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, we don't have a lot of PodCamp Pittsburgh news uh, for you yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll be kicking off meetings uh, soon and um, getting started for this year's this year's planning. Um, I'm looking at Missy Sorg right now, who's like hyperventilating as I'm making just this statement. She knows it's coming, so I'm not worried about it. So tonight we have um, some very special guests with. Uh, with us, uh, we are um, talking about the Monster Haiku Project. Uh, with uh, and I want to welcome um, Will Rutherford, Josh Sager, and Rachel Sager. So thanks for joining us, and uh, I want to talk to you guys tonight about uh, your exciting project, um, Monster Haikus. So um, Monster Haiku is a book of illustration, and uh, <laughs> and so I. I um, I've uh, been following your haiku monster uh, creation process for a while. I know, Will, you've been writing haikus for um, some time now, and Rachel, you've been illustrating for your, most of your career. And uh, so it, it's interesting to see this, this project come together. And um, uh, it's been fun to, um, to follow you guys, because all three of you guys are staples in the PodCam community. And, um, you know, so uh, when, when everybody branches out and, and kind of works on their own projects and then mingles and works on projects together, I think that's extra exciting for, for everyone, including myself. So, um, so yeah, so, um, so f this is the second of um, your, the second time you guys have collaborated um, on the monster haiku, or in, in, in general, writing poems and illustrating. Um, so do you want to talk, let's start there. Um, how did you guys um, start your collaboration? Um, well, in 2009, I started a blog called 52 Ls, um, where I did one illustration per week for a year. Um, and the following year, at the next pod camp, um, Will and I were discussing um, creativity over drinks, I believe, um, which is always an important equation of creative <laughs> collaboration totally. um, and he you know he enjoys writing haiku and he likes having visual um, cues to take from or to, to expand upon with his poetry and I was like take my drawings please so yeah I think I, I have been writing haiku since I don't know I think 2006 that doesn't seem right but <coughs> I'm just gonna say 2006 okay and um, I always found that you know people seem to enjoy it more when there was uh, an illustration or a photograph along with it it added it, it added more to the photo and more to the haiku itself and um, I felt that Rachel's 52 illustrations project was just it was just perfect for something like this so like she said I, I uh, asked if I could use them on my blog and it just kind of went from there. Yep. And then once we had content, we were like, let's do something with this content. <laughs> so um, it uh, had to cook for a while, but uh, I started laying his haiku out with the illustrations and embellishing those illustrations starting in the summer. So. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I know I went back and I looked at the 52 ills. It's at 52ills.com? Yeah. Is that? Okay. Yeah. So I went back and I looked at that site this week, and I couldn't find a lot of the stuff that Will did, and I was looking on thoughtfulriot.com, or th it's thoughtfulriot.blogspot.com. Just .com. .com. Yeah, they'll both get oh, you Oh, they'll both get you there? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and I couldn't find them, because I, I was like, kind of excited to, to go back and look, and I'm interested to see how... Um, how much they they've changed, like or what's different? Because I've no, I noticed as I was going through 52 ills that some of the preview images, their the characters um, had some original form in from yes. from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think all of with, there's 26 spreads in the book, which is what Monster Haiku is. It's a little five inch by five inch um, illustrated haiku book, and uh, there's 26 spreads, and probably 20. Four of them are specifically from, it's almost a direct lift from 52 Ills for the book art, and then, you know, I gave it a background or okay. um, improved upon it in some way. Um, yeah, I noticed, like, some of the, the creatures have a little bit more texture, yeah. some fur or, or something, or scaly or something. Je ne sais quoi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get a little bit more of that, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Well, 52 Ills was for me to get, for me to improve my illustration skills, and so two years later, Two, three years later, um, I'm a little bit better, so cool. I refined. Them. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So then, you know, this isn't your first book, right? So you've worked, you've had other book projects in the past, right? 
Um, uh, I mean, I've I've written some prose before. Um, okay. It's but not your first illustration book either. It's not. No. What about Katie's book? Oh, I did make an illustrated book for my niece. Oh. Yes. Um, when was about, that? Like 2005? Yeah, it was many years ago, I think and it you was about a Princess ton Katie. On that project. <laughs> and there are monsters, and she has to teach the monsters to be nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, because uh, my question is, um, how how does Monster Haiku Volume One or Part One fit into <laughs> your grand book? book goal, book, book writing goal, or book creation goal? Um, I don't know. It's a nice starting point, I guess. I'm, it's, it's the most complete piece that I've ever worked on, so I'm excited to take everything that we learned from this experience, um, because we've, I mean, the whole thing has been just insanely educational, um, and I'm excited to take that and learn even more in volume two. Awesome. Yeah. I heard you got some ISBN numbers this week. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So We got 10. So oh. there'll be eight more books. Is that like URLs? Like you just buy all the different spellings? Like um, Sort of. When you <coughs> get an ISBN number for a printed book, you also need another one for any digital format. Mm -hmm. And if you get one for Moby, it's different. If you get one for um, e EPUB or whatever that is, that's also different. For every iteration, you need a different number. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So one, I have one more question for, for you, Rachel, and then I'm going to grill Will for a second. <laughs> what, so what's mainly your inspiration when you're starting with, from, when you're looking for monsters, you just like go look under your bed or in your closet? <laughs> like, where do you start? Um, I don't know. I like, I, it sounds really corny, but I really like monsters because they're always right. You can add, you can give them three eyes and you, you can make them disproportionate. And when you're an illustrator, you know, I'm not aiming for realism, so there's kind of a nice uh, beauty, I think, in making quirky things, and monsters fit nicely into that. Different number of eyes, different colors, bright colors. Um, and what's really fun is once I start to make them, I totally invent backstories for all of them. Okay. So, so, you know, I'll draw one and I'll be like, well, he looks much too happy. He's just generally cranky. So I've got to, you know, adjust him to be a little more. That's yeah, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah. That's, fun. that's cool. Yeah. Now, Will, I, I need to ask you, I mean, knowing you and, um, you know, if I, no, knowing the past projects you've worked on, and if I saw you on the street, um, I wouldn't necessarily recognize you as a poet. You know, especially after I've seen you in a luchador mask many times <laughs> or, um, you know, doing wrestling mayhem show stunts or, you know. So, so like, my question is, is how do you go from stoke monkey to haiku <laughs> author? Uh, well, we all know that everything Stoke Monkey said was poetry. Okay. So, in its own way. Um, no, it's just, it's it's two, granted, two vastly different things that I both uh, love, uh, wrestling and poetry, and it's, like, for me, it's just two sides of the same coin. Um, on a lot of episodes of the Wrestling Mayhem show, you know, I'll wax philosophical about why we like wrestling and where it comes from and what it means to us. Um... And I think that, uh, like, they're both, both wrestling and haiku are both, you know, art forms. They're both meant to have an emotional response, uh, one way or the other. So, what are so where do you get your inspiration when you're when you're developing your craft? Um, well, uh, sometimes I get it. Uh, honestly, sometimes I get it from the photos. I'll uh, I'll pull an illustration or a photo and I'll look at it for a while and I'll you know, try and figure out what's going on in there or what could be going on and um, I'll write from there, but some other times it's just, I'll hear an interesting turn of phrase, you know, two words that sound good together and I'll think, oh, I want to put that in a poem somehow and I'll start, I'll just be at work and I'll be doing this and start counting syllables, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. for something that I want to put down later, so. Yeah, now what's the formula for a haiku again? It's, uh, the first line is five syllables, the second line is seven syllables, and the third line is five syllables again. Okay, cool. Now, do you feel like that, the constraints of that help you ex express yourself more? Or? Definitely, yeah. I love, I love the idea that, um, because in writing free form, you can just, you can just do whatever, and that's, I think that's easy to a certain degree, but with haiku, you're restricted to that five, seven, five format. And to still uh, get the emotion across to the reader that uh, that you want, I feel it's so much more challenging, and more um, you really strip away what's unneeded, and you boil it down to the essentials. And then if you can add other things like being clever or puns or whatever, um, then like 
I, I love the the idea to strip it down and then build it back up. So cool, awesome. Yeah. Now, Josh, between Will writing the poems and Rachel doing all the illustrations, it doesn't seem that leaves much for you to do in this process. <laughs> So Josh uh, did all the I keep I keep saying this in interviews he did all the really hard gross sticky stuff that comes with putting a book out. Nah, I just partied the whole time. <laughs> See, I'd ride the wave too. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's why I invite you guys on here. <laughs> no, I just kidding. So yeah, so what what was your contribution to the project? Um, I guess you could say that I was. Well, I, first and foremost, I'm the publisher. So I started a company last year, and um, all of this entire project is funneling through that company. Um, I've handled all of the legal things. We, we had to run a couple of our spreads through our lawyer to make sure that we weren't infringing on any intellectual property. Um, handling I, ISBN numbers, tax IDs, uh, built the website, setting up uh, events, PR, sent out like 100 press releases, like all of the project management sort of things and it's been kind of great uh, working with both of them um, especially because I'm not as intimately involved as they are because um, we've been able to make some really good decisions like changing the title of the project yes it did originally have a different title it had a horrible yeah. title. it was not a horrible <laughs> it was title terrible it was, well, can, can you say the title yeah it was oh my god what's wrong with your dog no. <laughs> it's oh my god there's something wrong with your dog yeah whatever yeah. It's, that's and monster haiku is a little easier to sell it kind <laughs> because of it's a book not about bad things that you know <laughs> that's right it has monsters and haiku in it yes. Yes. Although that does make an appearance in the book. Oh my God, there's something wrong with you, Doug. Yeah. But I mean, that could be a really interesting book all in and of itself. Yeah. That's, what I'm that's saying, like a but... Fiona Apple's second or third album. Yeah. You know? See, I wouldn't recommend maybe What's Wrong with Your Children and then just go there right away. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. It's like, it reminds me of that um, PowerPoint that went out a few years ago of like children's drawings and oh, the guy yeah. making fun of it. I love that. It was funny. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I, I've been doing um, a lot of that stuff, like mostly management. Um, a couple of years ago, we, we've been talking about doing a project like this for a long time, and whenever we breached the subject, um, it was a little difficult because it's like, well, if you want to do this, there's a lot of things you have to set up. Otherwise, you could run the risk of opening yourself up, and it could be really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And so Rachel, um, and I quote, said, I don't want to do any of that stuff. I just want to make art and sell it to people and give the money away to a good cause. And so I've done everything within my power to make that happen. Great, cool. So how are you using, you know, we'll tie it back into PodCamp, I guess. So how are you using social media to promote the project? Um, if we didn't have social media, we wouldn't have anything at all whatsoever. Our moms <clears throat> would have bought a book. That's who would have um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, that would have been it. So that's funny that you bring that up because we weren't going to do a Facebook page at all. Um, it was actually um, Missy that inspired it um, because she's working on a project with Chachi for Chachi Plays, which everybody should check out. Um, I don't know tomorrow when this, night. Yeah, tomorrow night. Yeah. I don't know when this goes, but you should check that out. Um, she sent out a press release um, that came in my inbox, and one of the things was check out his Facebook page. And so Rachel and I started talking about it, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. That's like one more thing to keep tabs on and you know Twitter is kind of like where we hang out but um, it turns out that our demographic is primarily on Facebook and our main demographic was mommies okay because we're benefiting the March of Dimes and um, we did a lot of research on uh, you know successful product launches and read like a lot of materials and one of the things was about building momentum ahead of time so we had some discussion about whether or not we should even do a pre-announcement because it is a pre-order and uh, Rachel was not a fan of that. No, I was not like, at all. Care. But uh, it worked out really well. Our strategy was to announce 13 days out and then give out one illustration or one sneak peek or teaser every day leading in. And it worked out amazingly because the day we launched, we had 100 Facebook likes. Great. So we, we carried that momentum in and that translated into sales. And the project has been a success already and we're only one week in. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, um, there is another um, Monster Haiku website out there. I don't know there if you're is. aware of it. I, I'm absolutely aware of it. <laughs> I know, and uh, I'm I was, this close to taking it the the top spot on, uh, in, on Google. All right, yeah. excellent, excellent. Well, congratulations. I well, and the reason I bring it up is because I was looking at that project, and um, they have about a hundred Facebook likes, and very few people were talking about it this week. And I was comparing the two, and you guys are have much higher volume at this current date. So, so yeah, so 
Awesome. So yeah, it's a good thing you did do you. Facebook, and that's, yeah. that's great. Yeah, and we I was, did Twitter. We also did Google+. Plus. Um, we didn't get a whole lot of play from Google+. Plus, and Twitter is such a of-the-moment kind of thing, where Facebook, the, there's like a little bit of staying power, because it'll some people talk about it, and it hops up to the top. And then like more people talk about it, and it hops up to the top mm-hmm. again. Where like Twitter, once it's gone, like you're in the noise, and that's it's the end. Right. Oh, I was gonna yeah, I was gonna ask you about your target audience. So you, so you, did you find that it's moms, or was that your initial audience from the beginning, or how did, um, was that part of your thought process at all? I think our initial audience was ourselves in the very beginning, um, which is sort of a selfish thing to do. And as the project evolved, I think we kind of realized who the audience was because of the kinds of questions that we were getting. Um, we set up a launch party at Las Bellas, which was amazing. Um, thank you so much, David. It was awesome, um, and from the kind of feedback that we got from there as well as some of the emails and what people were tweeting and, and Facebook posting about, we really realized that um, Mommy's was where it was at for us. Um, and then our, our Facebook stats indicated that we are really high in females uh, versus males, but except in the 20-year-old category, <laughs> we're higher in males, so I don't know, <laughs> which I thought was a little strange. That's cool. That's cool. But um, we started getting really cool stuff from people that I had no idea who they were, and um, it's influenced uh, at least one of the spreads that we're changing before we send it to print. Yes, yes. I've been asked um, at least twice if it's child-friendly. And uh, my sense of humor is not necessarily always child-friendly, so there are two spreads that were questionable in there, and we're changing at least one. Okay. So. Um, oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And so th- that's interesting, because we talked about this a couple weeks ago, and you know, I, I had assumed you already printed them, and you were just going to mm-hmm. unload them, and um, but you're taking, you know, the way you're doing it is you're taking pre-order. So, um, you have the opportunity to respond to your audience yeah, the, the before you thing. actually it, it, make it. Yeah. Which is awesome. And and when we were initially wanting to launch, like I wanted to launch the website at what, January two? Yeah. And something like that. And you're like, No, that's <laughs> that's too real right now. Why don't we just February first? And so I prepared to launch for January second and it was amazing because then after that I was like, Oh, look at these things I forgot. Why don't I make it work for mobile devices and iPads and what does it look like on a Kindle and uh, let's make it go all the way back to IE6 and all the, all of those other little details that you never really get that's a chance a, that's to That's a monster story all in itself. <laughs> it oh. is. It, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, it was. And turns out it's good that I did that because uh, Chrome, uh, a lot of hits on Chrome, and IE8. Huh. Yeah. The things you learn, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, the pre-order has been just crazy. Um, we weren't sure how it would be received, but but we've gotten a lot of support, which is nice. So the pre-order has allowed us to kind of adjust some of the spreads, but it also allows us to add the names of the people that order the book as contributors too. So and that they get is going to be a part well. of the project, which they, I think mm-hmm. is really important. That they love that. Will their names be? You print it in the book? In the book, oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a contributor's page. Contributor's page. So, yeah, yeah, so that's a good thing to know. So if you haven't gotten your book yet, make sure you go there. You can get, get involved and, yes. and get your name printed. So yes. that's that's kind of exciting. So yeah. we wanted to kind of reward um, people for supporting the project and waiting, you know. So I if don't you... know what you mean by... <laughs> Sorry, Siri. If you that's want, you can get the book. I mean, we can do that for you. Siri got really excited about that, and that's my fault. Sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but we wanted to reward people for supporting the project, and and uh, the, the mothers that I've received several emails from some of the mothers that are just so excited that their child's name is typically what they'll do. They'll sure. put their child's name in the oh, book. Oh yeah, that would be really exciting. And and um, parents are buying multiple books. Which yeah, we which did not I didn't, anticipate. Didn't so anticipate people will get a book for each of their children, or say, "I got one for my daughter and one for my nephew." And right. That's something that I. I mean, I. Why would you need more than one? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll have, to buy, reason, I'll have so. to buy one for my Siri so she can. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So this is a great segue. So you guys brought some samples of the book. So I'd love if you guys could maybe talk about maybe talk about some spreads, and um, maybe talk about some of the illustrations and the poems and kind of what maybe what you thought well, about. Well, this is processes. the. The cover of the book and it's going to print about that size okay five by five five, five by five, five. yeah right. hard cover right um soft yep cover. no no soft cover uh perfect, perfect bound, bound. Perfect. yeah okay yeah. we're getting them printed i believe it's in tennessee yeah. um hard hard bound you look we learned a lot on the pricing scheme here and hard binding a book even that small was going to be 12 bucks a pop a and hard, cover. hard cover hard yeah, cover sorry yeah. and and that's so much less than, I mean, that's half of what we're charging for the book, and so that would mean the amount of money that March of Dimes get, gets is so it much is, lower. There's a lot less, yeah. So it'll, it'll still be a nice product, but it won't be hardback. 
I'm so excited. We've been about. very uh, cost conscious, uh, but we've tried to do a lot of small things like packaging. Um, Rachel's working on some packaging right now with a belly band, and uh, it'll be sealed with a sticker and tissue paper, and like it's going to be like an event to get it rather than it just falling out of an envelope. Um, we're, we, we're making buttons as like a thank you, and uh, for everybody that has ordered uh, a book, the, there's a screen printed uh, thank you that has a link to a iPad version mm. that you can get. So everybody that bought that can also get it electronically. For oh, free. that's that's cool. Yeah. Right. So that's a lot of benefits. Okay, so you got something pulled up here. Yeah. So this is a, a PDF. Um, these are just some of the spreads. This is some of the monsters, and it's all like uh, full color bleed. Oh, wait, wait. So what's so what are we looking at here? So this is a this is a monster on a swing in a hat, who's Greeting the sunrise. Yes, it's greeting the sunrise. Oh. Would you like to read the haiku? Yes, I will? would. Sure, sure. Um, he's, as I said, he's greeting the sunrise. He says, "Good morning, my friend. I saw your echoes streaming. Heard your song singing. I'm ready to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I like this one. This yes. is this is whenever you were sick." And so what, what's kind of cool for me is I remember when she was doing these illustrations back in 2009. So there's a story of like m our lives like throughout because yeah. I remember when these were going on. And this is when you were super sick and you had bronchitis yes. and you were just coughing up gross stuff forever. <laughs> it's for all of you out there. Yeah. 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 It happens to everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I really like dinosaurs. Like I'm like, I'm a dinosaur. I'm like a six year old boy. Um, <laughs> so this was bronchitosaurus? This is the bronchitosaurus, yes. Yeah. Awesome. So, awesome. So. So yeah. About to be extinct by the asteroids. That's right. That's yeah. right. Not illness, as some scientists think. <laughs> yeah, the owl and, and is a favorite. One, yeah, this is a good one. Have we'll read that one. Yeah, that's... I will read this one. There's, there is a part of the backstory on this one was that um, I sent a tweet that said uh, something like an owl will never stop trying to kill you or something like that, and uh, uh, Rachel was inspired, so she made this uh, this drawing of this little owl just scowling, sending his throats. I'm gonna get you. Ruthless, heartless, hoot, hoot! An owl will never stop trying to end you. Cute. It's been interesting on Facebook also to see which um, spreads, because we release the spread every one or two days. It's been really interesting to see which ones hit and which ones don't, because there are some that I'm like, ah, that's my favorite one! And, um, you know, maybe Josh is like, eh, but there's others that I'm like, I don't really care about, but Josh really likes. And Facebook, it's been the same way on Facebook. The owl one was really popular. We ended up selling several books that day. <laughs> that one, and you can find and the correlation pretty, there. Yeah, for sure. This is actually the spread that's in question right now. <laughs> yeah, <because we're> <laughs> <clears throat> But she's already changed it. It's okay. Yeah. The Sheriff Nanner uh, did pretty well too. Yeah, that's my that's one of Sheriff my favorite Nanner ones. Sheriff Nanner is excellent. Yes. Um, I really really like the um, that one's super cute. Where's it at? This is actually my favorite spread. So what's so what's happening in this? Um, well, if if you'd like to read the haiku, then I can explain sure, more sure. Of what it means. Summers, Monster Town. And monsters don't have AC. Finally, relief. And what you see there is a monster that has shaved his fur off into a bikini <laughs> so that he may be cooler in the hot summer mm. monster weather. So, yeah. he's, he's in touch with his feminine side for sporting yeah. the bikini. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, the chameleon got a lot of play too. This is one of the f early spreads that, mm -hmm. that we floated out there. Yeah, this is one of the ones I noticed that you added a lot of texture and yeah. detail to. Yeah, the, in 52 Ls, you really only see him with a leaf behind him and then all of the rest of it. And that's that's what happened with most of the illustrations. I pulled a character out and then put more thought and effort and life and skills into When we the started thread. talking about the project, I thought she was just going to lift them directly from the site. I didn't realize she was going to create environments for all of them. Yeah, here's, this is the... <laughs> The dog one. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that one. Uh... They're not all technically haiku. That, um, that one's not. I lobbied really hard for that one. I, it was my idea for that to be the title of the book because um, when I posted that one, I don't even remember what a haiku I wrote, but it was terrible because uh, Rachel was the one who wrote um, 
oh my god, there's something wrong with your dog, and that's better than anything I've ever written in my life. Yeah, so for it's 50, amazing. Yeah, for 52 L's, I would do a drawing, and then I would just be like some captured for it, and that was. So captured. for everyone sitting in the audience here that maybe can't see that, there's a fish with the dog, like walk the dog, and mm -hmm. Missy's. Oh, we've got finger puppets. <laughs> they know. <laughs> they know what's going on. Never mind. <laughs> that was another point of contention for us because Rachel, um, we were having a lunch party. Rachel's like, "Don't you think we should bring something?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's a really good idea." So. As like, you know, science fair procrastinators that we were, like the night before we go and track down these finger puppets at Target. And we had we went to the one in Robinson and they were sold out, even though the internet said otherwise. Oh so we drove all the way out to McKnight Road um, to get some other ones and we found them. She's like, oh cool, here we go. And I'm like, let's buy the lot. And she's like, really? You wanna spend like 15, 20 dollars on finger puppets? I'm like, yes. We are doing this. Yeah, and they're all gone. Like, they, they were, <coughs> they were super popular. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I couldn't make it to the launch party, unfortunately, but... Yeah, we missed I, you. I know, I had to moderate I took you that night, so... Um, I, didn't, I missed out on the finger puppets, so... We, we also, also had, had a, masks. We had a mask, and we had, um, we also had a pinata named Harold that wrote, that ate haiku poems. Uh-oh. So if you wrote a haiku poem and put them in his lunch pail, you could feed him for So we're getting ready to release those on Facebook. Like, <laughs> yeah, we'll share everybody. The user The ones that were yeah. dirty. I don't know what's wrong with like, that lot well. Margarita like was a big woman. inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah Margarita. Mar 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 poetry, right, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's cool. So I, I listened to you guys on Awesome Cast, and you said you had other special uh, things going on. Um, mm -hmm. The one is the um, your Valentine's Day mm -hmm. promotions. How is that going? Yes. What, what's going that all about? Um, we what we wanted to do is just kind of keep the momentum going. Um, and Rachel uh, designed some beautiful valentines, and Will created some awesome haiku. And so now they're together in a set that you can get for free. That's up on monsterhaiku.org/valentine. And so you can go and you can grab that, um, and you can print them out, and they're pretty fun. So. Throughout the day today, we've been leaking all of them um, one by one, and we just uh, did the robot, and uh, what's this guy called? I don't know how you pronounce it. I say Cthulhu. Cthulhu. It's Cthulhu. 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 Oh, Cthulhu. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody yeah. should know Cthulhu. Cthulhu. I know. Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah. I know. And so we, we did those today. Um, we also have had, uh, we have a couple other things in the works that we can't really talk about yet, just in case it doesn't come together, but we're pretty excited about it. But we, had, we brought Valentine's for everybody here today. Oh, how <laughs> so just in case, you know, yes. you forgot yeah. to get something for your sweetie. Yeah. And here's a couple of spreads for people to take a look at. Cool. Um, and this is approximate size too, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah so this is approximately how big it'll be. So we have a couple of spreads. Um, here's another one. It's got a lot of texture in it. Cool. And so we're, it's going to be 80 pound cover or 80 pound text, 100 pound cover, um, gloss uh, finish. So we're, we're really excited about it. Awesome. So there's one other thing that we haven't really talked about, and that's how um, you're donating 100% of the profits to March of Dimes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really awesome piece of the story that you guys have. So why, have, why did you guys choose March of Dimes? Uh, well, I have a couple of family members that um, in recent years have had um, premature uh, babies, um, one by month, and uh, one of my cousins actually had uh, a baby three months early, um, very tiny, and I mean she was like two pounds and wow. fit in the palm of her hand, and, and both are perfectly healthy now, and and um, we're all babies at one time, right, so we want to take care of all the babies, and Josh happens to be, he was born one month, month premature, one wow. month premature as well, so obviously I'm grateful that he was cared for and stuff, so, <laughs> um, so I thought that was a good place to start. Thank goodness for 1979 microwave technology. Yeah. You know, <laughs> hey, you know well, microwaves make us what we are some, in some ways. <laughs> no, that, that's amazing. Uh, it's, um, I think that's really inspirational, and you know, I mean, what's this? I mean, it's a really exciting project. You could just take the money and run, and you know, put it towards your next project or some fancy vacation, right? But um, no, that's really, really admirable. Um, I think standing behind a cause that's bigger than yourself helped us put the project together. Yeah. Because so many times we've talked about potential, and potential is like this crazy drug that, oh yeah, we could always, and then something comes up and it just never comes through. But mm -hmm. standing behind something like this that was important enough to like set aside the right amount of time and treat this like it's a job, and it has been. It's been like a full part-time job for us. Yeah. We've been put, logging sure. a lot of hours on it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you know, having that cause has helped us keep that momentum going. The yeah. momentum and also the dedication, I think. Yeah. Because, like he said, we've been talking about 
selling stuff online for years, um, but doing it for us obviously wasn't enough to push us towards getting it done. And, you know, doing it for the babies, like. <laughs> so I come home from a day of work and then I sit down at the dining room table and put in four or five more hours of work and it's a pleasure to do. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's obviously, you know, your work, hard work pays off and nothing worth doing is ever easy, right? So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty, um, and we've learned so much. Oh, like I, the, yeah, it's, yeah, so many aspects I didn't even know would go into printing a book or promoting a book and everything. Um, so I know it's early, so, and, and, you know, but you said volume one, are there any thoughts towards future volumes or is, is that I mean we'll see undecided. how this one turns out um, I'd love to do a second volume um, even if well I think what we should do <laughs> <laughs> finish this one executive first. decision here <laughs> is we have our closing reception for this project uh, at Wildcard which is right down the street on Friday the 13th April Friday the 13th and um, we'll have actual copies of the book on hand as well as posters and greeting cards and some original watercolor. After we close it all down, I think we'll kind of assess like how everything went and then kind of work from there. Yeah. Sure. Um, but I do for sure think this is going to be a launching pad for future projects. Um, and it's kind of our um, policy, I guess, from this point forward to do at least one 100% for profit project every year. Just to, to be good design citizens. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's really exciting. Well, good luck with that. We have this whole group of people here that, uh, does anybody have any questions? Any comments? I'd like to work with Josh, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <Will? laughs> Josh is a, really a pleasure to work with. Going into this, I was like, I'm married to him. I don't know how this is going to go. Um, but I think we've actually, I mean, we're, I think we're closer now than previous to the, to the project because I respect his skills as a web designer and developer and and he's learned to do all of these other things that I had no idea that he could do which has been pretty remarkable so um, and, uh, you're, oh. and he takes criticism really well I don't know if I take criticism as well <laughs> but um, we have a working dialogue which is nice I'm not married to Josh, uh, <laughs> but it's still, uh, it's been fantastic working with both of them. They, they keep me in the loop with whatever decisions, whatever they're working on, um, keep me updated. And uh, I can say without reservation, they have really helped me achieve what has been a dream in my life, and that is to see words that I wrote published in a book. And uh, that's huge. It's fantastic. I can't imagine how this... Uh, experience working with them could have been any better so awesome well, yeah well i definitely think that you know you guys are an inspiration of the podcast community and this is always great to see you guys continue to create good work and um yeah thanks thanks for coming on oh, thanks, thanks for doing for the interview with podcast and um yeah so stay tuned for more podcast news and uh more evenings with podcast i know as soon as we wrap this up i want to talk to a couple of people about when we're going to do our next date so we'll get an announcement out earlier than one week uh before we want to do this uh, so yeah, and with that, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's awesome.